Hello everyone, this is uh, Travis Tidwell and I'm going to be giving just a quick demo over what I've been working on with Drupal 8 and integrating multimedia on the front end presentation layer of the Drupal latest Drupal 8 core. Um, before I do get into this, I do want to mention that most of the work that I've been doing has been on the front end presentation layer of multimedia and not necessarily the back end. Um, management of media, which I, I feel like those are two completely different problems that that's both need to be solved, but most of the back-end work right now is being done on the media module, whereas I'm kind of working on trying to at least get some form of front-end presentation of multimedia into Drupal 8. And so that's pretty much what I've done with the latest uh, Drupal core. Um, for those of you who are interested in what I'm, uh, where you can go to see this development, you can go to my GitHub profile, which is just github.com. I am Travis T. And then you'll see a Drupal Multimedia, and then also just a min player, which is the uh, player that I built. Um, I've been working on for probably the past year, um, but that is also catered specifically toward CMS-type environments, and I'll go over that more in detail later. Um, but if you want to take a look at this Drupal Multimedia, this is a branch that I've done um, where I'm continually updating it with the latest version of Drupal 8 um, since it is constantly changing. But in addition, I've got two branches here. One branch is called 8x Media, and then there's another called 8x. 8x Media is what the I've been working in as far as like introducing the multimedia into Drupal 8 core. And then, of course, um, 8x is just flat out the latest 8, um, 8x branch of Drupal. Um, taking a look at the code just a little bit, um, most of the stuff that I've been doing has been within core modules and uh, file module. And as you can see, there is now a player folder, which I'll kind of go over more in detail whenever I get past the demo part, and then also the file module. Um, also, what's also really cool is if you actually go to the front page, and for those who would like to see all changes that have been made to Drupal 8 to bring in this functionality, there's a link right here that you can click on. And whenever you click on that, it's actually going to generate a diff where you can view all the changes that I've done to bring in this functionality that I'm going to be demoing for you um, in this video. So. Um, so yeah, there you go. Here's all the changes. So you can see it's quite a bit of changes just to get um, a front-end presentation um, layer for Drupal 8. So let's actually uh, go back over to this Drupal 8 install. Um, again, this is just a core Drupal 8 install. I um, haven't installed any modules whatsoever. Um, and basically what I did is I cloned this Drupal Multimedia branch and I just walked through the installer and I'm at that point right now. The first thing that I want to bring up, if you go to the modules section, the first thing you'll notice is that there are no contrib modules, which kind of is exciting because I haven't installed any contrib modules. Everything that I've done has been within the core of Drupal, uh, within the file module. So that's the first thing I want to mention. And um, once you have this site set up and running, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is just enable a content type um, so that it is um, able to present multimedia and we're going to do that within structure and we're going to go to content types now you can do this with any custom content type but for this demo I'm just going to be just doing this within the basic page just to kind of demo what I've uh, introduced the first thing you're going to do is go to manage fields and we're going to add a new file field and I'm just going to call this media okay. and I'm just going to say media basically the same thing there and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select file as the field type and you'll notice that on the widget there's only um, there's still only one widget type which is file that's because most of the stuff that I've done has been within manage displays which we'll do after we set this up I'm going to go ahead and hit save and I can just skip over this and say save field settings and the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to provide allowed file extensions for media um, so this can be I've already got this pretty much saved which is just a bunch of file extensions that you can see that pertain to media. One thing you will notice is that I've included MP3 in here because, which is also just as exciting, is that not only does this play uh, provide video support to Drupal 8, 
but this also provides audio support so and it handles it the exact same way as it does video so you can not only upload videos but you can also upload audios which is really exciting so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to hit save and so now that we have our file field um, set up the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to manage the display of that file because that is where you are going to be able to show that media as a media player so let's click on manage displays within here you're going to see that there's the media field that I set up I'm going to go ahead and hit um, hidden on the label and within format you're going to see that there's a new format that's now called media player let's click on that and what that does is it brings up a um, settings for your uh, media player and what, this is really cool this is all within the actual display formatters of that file we can change these settings by clicking on the gear over here which I'm going to do right now and the first thing you'll see is template and this is also another thing that's pretty exciting about this uh, for example the uh, media player by default provides a single template which is called default however there is a very simple hook system that allows any contrib module to basically provide their own templates for the core media player and not only contrib modules can do this but also themes can do this which also brings me to another exciting point which is now themes can come pre-shipped with a media template that matches their template which is really exciting um, so that each template can say hey you know here's the media player that I want um, that I want to use for my template so that all the media basically matches the overall theme and look and feel that I'm trying to go for which now is it's totally possible um, the next thing you're going to notice is all the just the basic stuff that you that you typically see whenever you're dealing with a media player such as preload autoplay loop um, there's a width which I, I set as 100% which I like just because that automatically fills the con its bounding container um, there's a height that you can change the initial volume one thing that I do want to bring up and talk about a little bit is this checkbox that's called allow, allow multiple sources now this the reason why I had to put this in here is because by default the file field behaves much different than the video element does within a browser so basically what that means is that whenever you upload a file within the file field or you upload multiple files that basically treats each file that you uploaded as a separate instance um, meaning that they are basically different videos that are just you're just wanting to upload multiple videos to the file field however within the video element the way that it expects is it allows for multiple sources and what that basically means is you can provide a multiple files however they are different encodings or different derivatives of the same video so because there's that discrepancy here I, I created this check this checkbox that basically allows you to convert your file field into the um, the method in which the video element expects meaning that multiple instances that you're uploading to that file field basically translate to um, multiple derivatives of the same video if that makes any sense so now that I've explained that we can just hit update and I'm gonna go down here and hit save and so now we're basically ready to start adding videos to our site at this point um, so what I'm gonna do is just go to add content I'm gonna create a basic page since that's where I created my type what I'm gonna do is click choose file and the file that I'm going to choose is just this oceans clip and I'm going to hit upload and once that's been uploaded I'm going to give it a title and I'm going to hit save so now right away what you're going to see is a media player that just shows up that is able to play the media that we added to this node um, another thing you might notice is that um, it has some very very basic controls um, in fact one of my main goals for this project um, into implementing uh, multimedia within Drupal 8 was not necessarily to provide this feature rich media solution but rather to provide the most basic front end presentation layer for media but then also allow a plug-in um, architecture so that people can build on top of it so people could you know add additional functionality to this player but they can do that from within contrib modules so um, but what you're going to notice is that there is a um, that it is actually playing the multimedia. Um, there's also a um, a feature where you can 
Uh, do full browser mode where you can just uh, expand it and, and view the media within full browser, which is pretty slick. Um, you can click that. The, um, the volume controls are all driven using jQuery UI, so I'm not necessary. I'm not re rewriting um, how to do um, slider controls or any of that. I'm using the facilities that Drupal already provides, such as jQuery UI and some of the um, uh, other elements to provide a multimedia interface um, that taps directly into Drupal Core. So this is really exciting stuff. Now there's one really unexpected and what I consider really amazing um, piece um, that I also included is the ability to bring in third-party support. Um, so I, whenever I deal with multimedia, I have a lot of people that basically says, you know what, all I want is just a text field and just copy and paste some URL or some third-party URL into that text field, and I just want to play my media. Well, I'm pleased to say that I actually included that, that functionality um, within this core patch, and I'll give you an example of how that, that works. And, and once you guys see this, this will be really exciting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Structure, and I'm going to go to Content Types, and now I'm just going to deal with Article. I'm not going to deal with Basic Page because we're going to set, up, set it up very, very differently. So I'm going to go to Manage Fields, and I'm going to say media, where I'm just going to call it the same thing, and I'm going to call this media um, URL is what I'll call it. And so what this is going to be is just a text field. So it's just a very basic text field. I can just hit save field settings right here. And then I can just go down and hit save settings on there as well. And now that I have a text field, um, we're going to basically do the same thing that we did with the media upload, except we're now going to do it with the text field. And that is go to manage display. And on this media, you'll notice, I'll just go ahead and hit hidden on that. You'll notice this also has a media player format. And basically what you're telling it now is you are saying, okay, I want you to translate this text field or whatever I put into here as a direct URL to a media element or a media item. So you just select media player. We're just going to go down and hit save. And so now this is what's really cool. Out of the box, we're going to go and uh, we're just going to go ahead and hit um, add content and I'm going to add an article. And you'll see that my new field is right here. So out of the box, the media player provides support for third party um, players such as Vimeo and, and YouTube. Um, it also allows, it's very extensible, meaning that modules can basically create their own plugins to their own third party uh, media player um, implementations. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go to YouTube and we're just going to find a video. I just OK Go on treadmills is a good one that I like. And OK, here he is right there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this URL. Okay, so here's, and this actually, um, oh, oh, that's really loud. So I'm just going to copy this URL, and I'm going to bring it over here, and I'm going to hit just paste. That's all I did. I just copied the URL and hit paste. And then I'm going to say, OK, go on treadmills. Now, what's really cool about this is you notice all I did was just paste the URL. The media player is smart enough, and the way that it's actually implemented, it's multiple players, is that you basically derive from a base class if you want to provide your own media player and then the um, the player basically scans through those and passes the URL saying hey um, can you play this file and in this case the YouTube player that's all that's already prepackaged in with the media player that's that's in this patch it basically raises his hand and says yes I can play that and then the uh, player basically gives him control over the player and as you can see, that's all I did, and now I've got YouTube playing in my core Drupal install. And what's really cool about this is you notice that the controls stay the same. In fact, all of this, all of the controls are identical um, to what you saw the previous media look like. And that's that's one of the uh, big um, that is a, a big feature about this player is that it basically wraps the um, YouTube JavaScript API into a common interface so that they all look the same so that no matter where your media is coming from it is going to look the exact same as even if it was on a local server so this is really cool and the same thing applies to Vimeo so I could go out to Vimeo and I could just copy and um, paste the URL into a text field 
and it will bring in that video and play it within the browser. And all of this from a single Drupal core patch. So really exciting stuff. So that's pretty much it as far as the functionality, the added functionality is concerned. One thing that I do want to do is just kind of just briefly go over just some of how the architecture of the code is laid out. Um, so for those of you who are, who are not code junkies, you can pretty much just stop the video at this point and and get really excited because this is what's um, this is what's coming to um, Drupal 8 in the future. So um, so let's actually take a look at um, let's take a look at the code. So the very first thing, in fact, what I actually did is I pulled in that the the min player. I pulled that into the um, the file modules file, and we're going to look at player. And what I really want to look at here is just the source code and just kind of just show you how the source code is laid out. And the first thing I want to mention is that every single thing inside this player is a plugin, including the players themselves. And all of that is driven by a single class called plugin. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that this is very object oriented, meaning that we're, I use the prototype heavily just so that we can define methods on objects. And so, whenever you knew that object, you basically have the total encapsulation of the data within. Um, another thing that I want to mention is that there is a very, very simple API for the min player, which is just min player get. And what this does is it, re it is basically a fetcher for plugins. And what's cool about this is that you can basically get a plugin that has does not even exist yet. So if you just type min player get, um, and the the name for the media plugin is called media. So if you say min player get media, and then provide a callback, you are basically going to get that object or get that that um, object when that object is ready to take events. And so you'll notice throughout the um, the code base, I use this API. To um, so like for example like within the control bar, um, so you say controller base. You'll notice that what this is doing is is it needs the media player so we can attach events to it. Um, all I do is I say uh, min player, which is basically that this, and I just say get get the media. And what it does is it returns that media object, which I can then I can bind um, to whenever it pauses. I can do stuff to it. I can I can call. Um, I can call you know play. I can call pause. I can do call seek. Um, so here you can see I'm actually seeking the the media based on how they interact with the seek bar. So a lot of really cool stuff that's provided by this plugin interface. Another thing I do want to mention uh, before I stop this um, this demo is that you'll notice that there are um, currently one uh, there's currently one two three four five six six different player implementations. These are completely object oriented and, and, and basically act as a shim to whoever they're communicating to. So a great example would be, um, let's say Vimeo is a really good one. So if you open up the Vimeo class, you'll notice that all I do here is implement the shim for how you interact with the Vimeo player. So um, once I get down to here, so like all you have to do is you have to say play. Whenever, whenever, um, whenever you get the, the call to say play, basically what you're doing is you're going to be um, calling the API function on the their API class. And so what you're doing here is you're basically wrapping their API. So it's really extensible, very object oriented. Everything is a plugin, and hopefully once you guys uh, review the code and just review what I've done. Hopefully we can get some momentum on this to get this into Drupal 8 because I think it will be really exciting. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I really appreciate you um, uh, spending the time to watch this and just kind of go over some of the stuff that I've done. Of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can contact me. I'm on Drupal.org. Uh, my username is Travis T. Or you can um, you can find me pretty readily on GitHub. Here's my profile, just Travis T. Um, thank you so much for your time and have a good day.